Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the City of Montpelier Development Review Board for Monday, December 17th. My name is Daniel Richardson. I serve as the chair. The other members from my right are Rob Goodwin, Meredith Crandall, staff, Kate McCarthy, Tom Kester, Ryan Kane. First order of business is the approval of the agenda. Does anybody have any additions, changes, uh, or a motion to approve the agenda? Mr. Chair, I'll move we approve the agenda as printed. Motion. Se second. Motion by Kate, second by Tom. All those in favor of the approving the agenda as printed, please raise your right hand. We have an agenda. So the comments from the chair are going to be a little bit more expansive tonight. And uh, Kate, do you want to help? So we're going to stand down here. members of the DRB that we're honoring uh, for their service uh, that have long, I think collectively, probably more years of service than we've had zoning in Montpelier, or somewhat close. Modern zoning in Montpelier owes these three gentlemen a huge debt, um, that they have brought the DRB to the body that it is today. They have overseen a great deal of the development that the city has undertaken over the past 15, 20 years. And if you like the way Montpelier looks today, you owe each of these gentlemen uh, a debt of gratitude because it's their hard work, their determination, their fairness, their poise and uh, practice that have brought us to the city that we have today. And we're really fortunate to have had their service here on this board. I've enjoyed serving with all three, and uh, I felt very strongly that they all needed to be recognized for their service. This is a volunteer board. It's a thankless job. You get pushed on the street for you know, appearing on TV and making a decision somebody doesn't like. Um, there's no rewards. There's no pension system. It's, it's just simply giving to the community. And these three members that we're celebrating tonight um, are exemplars of that community service. So it's really my pleasure. I'd ask them to come up. So Roger Kranz, Jack Lindley, Phil Salinger, um, we have for you um, a commemorative map of the city of Montpelier with your names. Roger, this is yours right here. Oh, wonderful. So Phil, I have one for you. And Jack, Meredith has yours. So Jack, turn <laughs> Got it. All right. Well, I want to thank each of you. But I don't know. And Bill. No, no. I, I, I want to. I want to face these distinguished individuals. Um, so I've heard Meredith that all of her predecessors that zoning is the worst job in city government. And that's because, you know, the firefighters are the heroes. They come and save you, and they come to, you know, the, the uh, ambulance and all that, they help. The police come and help you, but sometimes they give you a ticket. DPW, you know, they plow you, it's great, but then there's potholes, so, you know, they're kind of a mixed bag. Zoning, you've got to ask permission to use your own property. So even on a good day when someone gets a permit, they're still a little grumbly about it. And I think the only thing worse than being paid to do zoning is to volunteer to do zoning. And I, 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 I think you, you folks have really given to this community for a long, long time. And I, as a staff person who's also been here for a long, long time, have appreciated the efforts that you have put in on behalf of the city. And um, in particular, not to single anyone else, but Phil, you know, Phil predates me on any of these boards. When I got here, you were, I think, chair of the ZBA and has been uh, a, a long period of time. So I have a little special something for you. Uh, I'm going to give you a key to the city. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, 
the astute amongst you will observe that it doubles as a bottle opener. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> double one hundred. <laughs> yeah, exactly. For, for use after the meetings. Um, but anyway, thanks you to all three of you on behalf of the city. We do really appreciate everything that you've done. We do. Thank, thank you, Bill. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Uh, I, I would just say a few words. Um, I've worked with every zoning administrator the city has ever had. Mike Jones was the first zoning administrator, and so he, he still served in the uh, mid-80s when I went, joined the Zoning Board of Adjustment. So I've worked with every zoning administrator the city has ever had. Um, they've improved exponentially. No, the administration of zoning has improved exponentially in the last 30 years. And uh, when I left, it was still improving, and I expect it will continue to improve. People take the job seriously. They dedicate themselves to understanding the ordinance and applying it evenly and fairly. Staying on the reservation when it comes time to make decisions, being judicious, and being fair. So uh, I, I don't expect that it won't continue to improve. And ZBA, I think the DRB is in good hands. But thank you for the recognition. We never did it for the recognition. I, I <laughs> well, I was going to say, it's, a, it's, it's a bad no. deal if it was for the... <laughs> well, I can also tell you that uh, the administration of our meetings changed dramatically when they became televised. <laughs> it was just as west of the Pecos before the, before the TV cameras started to, to, to run. But um, I think it's been positive for the city as well. Everybody can watch the administration of the DRB. So, thank you very much. Good. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Thank you, thank you, thank you He came from the business. zoning side. I came from the planning side. And Mike Jones also took care of planning at the time when that was started with our good friend Alan Blakeman. Alan and I came over. So he's the zoning guy, and I'm supposed to be on the planning side. Happy to tell members here that service on this committee is probably the most important thing you can do for the city. And you should have a good time doing it. Don't let it get you down. There's going to be some tough times, but if you have Dan as the chairman instead of Phil, I'm sure he can get you through. <laughs> <laughs> good luck, Thank you, Phil. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks for your effort. And Merry Christmas to all, and yes. to all a good night. Thanks. 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 Why don't, why don't we take a five minute break if we can? That's okay. Uh, did we, I don't think we have the um, enough members to approve the minutes from December 3rd, which is the next thing on our agenda. I would agree with that. Right. Yeah. Maybe next time. There's always next time. So let, let's. Uh, Let's go forward to the fifth item, which is the first item of actual business. That is the final subdivision plan review for 155 Northfield Street. The owner applicant is National Life Insurance Company. Um, and Chris, you're here to testify. If you I am, would might actually first state your full name for the record, please. Uh, Chris Durant Cuff. And you're here on behalf of the applicant. I'm here on behalf of National Life. Yes. Okay. So, if you raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the evidence you're about to give for the matter under consideration shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under pains and penalties of perjury? I do. Please go ahead. Let us um, As I think all the members who are present will recall, we were here for a uh, sketch plan review about a month ago for a subdivision of a two-acre parcel uh, surrounding the existing preschool and apartment building uh, located at 155 Northfield Street, uh, owned by National Life. Um, 
National Life is subdividing this parcel to donate to the Waldorf School. Um, the, the school has been renting slash leasing the, the uh, facility for their preschool purposes for a number of years and National Life uh, is going to convey them the property. Um, on this parcel, which is a, an aggregate 17.85 acres, uh, exists the preschool with the apartment overhead, uh, a solar farm, and the, the community gardens. Um, the parcels to be created are 2.05 acres with the preschool and the and the attendant accessory structures and uh, development, uh, play area, etc. Um, and then the remaining 15.8 acres with the solar farm and community garden. Um, the, the, the total area of 17.85 acres is demonstrated as a, as a succinct individual holding of the, of the National Life Insurance Company that has been merged for tax assessment purposes, uh, but is a, is a standalone individual parcel of land that they acquired 1968 I believe um, as we discussed the sketch plan review uh, and the the board seemed to be comfortable with it the the original parcel had been surveyed when National Life acquired it in 1968 uh, we have not at this point endeavored to resurvey the entire property uh, and have only surveyed the 2.05 acres um, in accordance with state um, statute and surveyor's board rule requirements. Um, I don't believe that uh, a boundary survey of the balance of the property is necessary to demonstrate compliance with the ordinance, um, and unless directed so by the board, uh, we, we don't intend to do so. Um, I think um, Meredith's summary and staff comments pretty well addresses everything that we have to offer. Um, a couple of things that the board did request at sketch plan review that we have added to the plan, as mentioned in Meredith's comments, we're addressing the um, riparian and, and water buffers. Um, I imported the VCGI LIDAR contour data and did my level best with that data to determine a top of bank um, it's not the data may be good the data may not be good the definition of the top of bank and field is is my my wonderment and my query and I took what I believe to be a very conservative top of bank um, to describe a, as the as the as the feature from which these buffers are measured um, um, I as Meredith noted in her comment, if anybody needs to, if anybody, either National Life for the remaining, uh, for the retained parcel lot number two, or the Waldorf School want to endeavor to do any further development on their lot, it's going to require a much more site-specific analysis of what those, of the, where those banks really are. Um, but at least everybody's on notice that those, those potential development issues exist um, and since no developments proposed at the, no additional developments proposed at this time we believe that's sufficient um, the one one area with uh, Meredith's comments regarding the language of the easement uh, to be reserved uh, there's a current access serving the solar farm that runs right through the middle of the project and we're intending to reserve it at National Life will reserve that easement through the property. Um, of late this afternoon uh, we were provided some as part of our application package we were provided some draft language for that easement. Um, late this afternoon we were provided some additional language that we believe further addresses the concerns as to the maintenance um, responsibilities and um, abilities of individuals to I do not have a bunch of copies unfortunately um, 
and the red is the change from what was submitted that further flushes out the ability of the school to maintain the area within this right of way, um, allows them to do whatever is necessary is to maintain that area as long as it doesn't impede national life's use to use the access to get back to the solar farm. Um, in addition, we would really like to be able to do to, to reserve this easement as part of the final exchange of, of the deed, of the drafting of the deed and conveyance to the Waldorf School, uh, as opposed to a separate easement. So we would ask that the condition that we, the, the draft language, if we provide the draft language to staff, which I, at this point we have, um, that we could get the condition mod, uh, modified such that, that the language appear in the final deed as opposed to a separate um, a separate document agreement that would have to come prior to the issuance of the permit. Um, we'd like to get the permit issued so that we can draft the deed and do this in one document so that those rights remain vested in national life as opposed to having two different documents that although the potential is slim that may not always align if it's everything's contained in one document it's all going to be on the table in one place for everybody to understand the rights and responsibilities of that right away so so the idea would be to take this draft easement language and uh slip it into the deed yes yeah um, exactly okay before we go into that i just want to make sure we Check off a couple of boxes. Sure. Um, there it is. Uh, so this is served by City Water and Sewer. Yes, sir. Yep. Um, and the current building has the uh, Waldorf School in the first floor, and is the apartment on the second floor residential yes. rented? Yep. Correct. And those are the only two uses on the property. Yes. On the on the two and a half acre lot one. Uh, right. On lot zero one. five acre lot one. Yes. The, the parcel to be split off and eventually yep. sold. Um, and then I note that um, just in looking at the staff comments that the current subdivision reports with density, lot size, frontage, and setback requirements. Um, and that the actual buildings inside are within any of the existing setbacks that would be created by this new lot. Although the, the map, the survey itself doesn't indicate that, but just measuring the distances would indicate that the uh, buildings yes. are within the setbacks. Yep. So we're not creating in, in inconsistent um, or non-conforming lot. Correct. I'm I'm satisfied personally, and just one member with the the threat of stream um, illustration. I think that's just important to indicate to the um, to future owners that there is this large feature that will obviously impede any type of de additional development. Yeah. Um, Then the staff findings are also the two lot subdivision without further development changes in use will not cause a disproportionate or unreasonable burden on city's ability to provide community facilities and utilities. Um, and not an undue adverse impact on traffic. Um, and that the lot arrangements are met. I think at this point, then, unless anybody, does anyone have any questions as far as the layout? I mean, I think we raked you over the goals last time to some degree, so. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think this whole question really then comes down to, do we want to fold the condition about the easement with the deed? And actually, there's a two-step part to that question. First is, and this is the staff comments about, you know, seeking, and I think this comes from public works, 
seeking clarity, does the revised deed clarify which parties have responsibilities for maintaining the road access, road over the access easement, and including a condition that the easement be recorded? Well, that's the second part of the question. So I think that the additional language touches upon that maintenance uh, point that the, the National Life would have the right to maintain the easement, the road to make for a, its own access purposes. Correct. Um, because beyond being a driveway, lot one, it, it has no other need for that access. No, no, it's not required to provide frontage or, you know, it's not the primary access to the, to the remaining to lot two by any means. Um, but it is, you know, it is a, an accessory. Again, the, the the school would have free run of it as long as I didn't do anything to obstruct National right. Life's access through there. No the storage containers in the middle of right. the, uh, <laughs> you the road. No plate. No right. plate. No plate pens. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, as far as where the easement deed goes, uh, I'm I'm satisfied that it be a representation that or a condition that any deed transferring lot one contain the the easement language and you know I think we've always been not inclined to tell people how to write their easement deeds because of the legal formalities of it mm -hmm. I think the language that's been included I'm not going to give a legal opinion on it but it, it certainly meets the the areas that we had raised from a zoning perspective and from a city perspective. So uh, I don't have a problem with the condition just simply saying that a road maintenance agreement similar in form with the elements shown in the sample be contained in the deed transferring lot one. That's Makes sense to me. Yeah, there's no reason to require a separate easement document. Um, it, I think it should just be in the deed transferring the property and I think it's Appropriate just to condition the approval on that. Okay. I guess I would say that we just say it needs to be recorded, regardless of how it's recorded. It doesn't have to be necessarily in that deed, or it could be a separate. Yeah, we just simply recorded as right. as part of either a separate agreement or as part of a deed. I right. mean, I don't I don't feel as if we need to to tell the applicant how to do it. Right. Uh, no, I, I that's a fair point. Um, okay. So I think there's a general consensus. Does anyone have any other questions about this uh, subdivision? Um, well, yeah, I just, maybe you could summarize. I know you've been back and forth with the Public Utility Commission and maybe not getting an answer at National Life Fest. National Life's lawyers have been back and forth. They, okay. have, they have reviewed the, the approval for the, um, for the solar fire. Okay. And, and the answer from them, and I believe it was provided by email um, by their attorney, Frank Monturkovic, to Meredith, I do right. not have a copy of that handy. Their review says there's no issue. Um, I don't know that barring some sort of formal application in front of the commission that we would have a formal answer from them in any in any fashion. But yeah. the feeling that of the attorneys that have reviewed it on nationalized behalf is that this doesn't in any way impact that approval. I mean, my sense for that issue, at least, is that becomes incumbent upon national life which is if by selling this parcel and not including certain language in the easement they come to violate their certificate of public good it's sure you know they can always come back and ask for an amendment um, and I don't think that's necessarily anything we need to condition it on yeah, um, yeah I would tend to agree I don't I mean I think I <laughs> I mean, we can give zoning permission, and it can turn out to be, you know, completely counteractive to the PUC CPG, in which case then it's incumbent upon the applicant right. to then figure out a way forward. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. And they've had, at this point, ample time. It was one of the first things I brought up when they mm -hmm. first brought us the project, wondering about doing this, was to just want to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Actually, though, what I do want to ask one question, at least, do the utility lines the, for the power of that solar farm, do they stay on lot two or they cross over lot one at any point? I have not the foggiest idea. I have not the foggiest idea. 
it seems unlikely that they would have come down between the buildings there. The, the prime, the utility pole, where, well, I shouldn't say I don't have the slightest idea. That's not completely true. The utility pole where the um, where the risers are is over here, on on the on the frontage where the conduits run up the, up the pole. How they get there, I don't know. We didn't see any evidence of a trench. Mm -hmm. um, I think that it would be behoove them, unless they have some as built information which hasn't been provided to us. Um, I would agree that it would probably behoove National Life to make sure that 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 is covered in language. I mean, I think that's again that's sort of easement language that yeah. doesn't necessarily affect our review, but may down the road be something that they want to pay attention to before they have to ask for it after a transfer. Any other questions? Yes, Kate. Um, I noticed a red highlighted comment from staff on page 13, which says, final, regarding landscaping, mm -hmm. it says the final plan does comply with section 3506F landscaping requirements, but the comment reminds the board that we may wish to consider and have the option of requiring additional planning between the community garden access road that will post boundary for lot one and the preschool play area. So um, I'm flagging that as a staff comment that we've been invited to consider. What's the feeling of the board? The, um, I'm trying to picture the space between the playground and the community garden. It kind of goes up a little like this, right? Yep. Yeah, it's up from the, what, I think this play area was actually a horse corral or something. Oh. But it actually rises, it does rise up from here up to the field, that okay. field drive there. Okay. It's unmaintained, yeah. primarily. Yeah. Just it appeared to be, you know, the annual bush hogging unmaintained field. Okay. I know that the landscape requirement says that one of the justifications for additional landscaping is to maintain and provide privacy both for adjoining property owners and between the lots within the subdivision. But looking at this and what you just said, we've kind of got topographic screening already. Between on the yeah. lot line between the western part of lot one and new lot two. Do I have that right? Uh, yes, lot one, yep. not two. And then yep. we have existing screening in the form of big tree um, on the other lot line. So I think yeah, it's that satisfied. The, the, the wooded gully certainly is, is separating it from, yeah. um, from the other residential uses to the east. Um, yep, yep. Okay. Um, uh, it, it, it's helpful for me to know that we have the option to think that through if there's more benefit to be had that meets the zoning requirements. But my read of it is that the, the benefit of additional landscaping would be marginal and that I would not ask for more. So. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, especially given that, you know, it's a community garden. I think if development were proposed, additional development on either of these lots, then it might be more appropriate to consider additional screening for that development. But uh, um, yeah, like you say, screening a, a play area that's already at a different elevation from a community garden uh, doesn't seem like something that we should be requiring people to do. And it, aesthetically, I think it's pleasing the way it is. Mm. And so, good. Thanks. Any other questions or any other issues? Hearing none, uh, I will entertain a motion if someone wishes to make it. Sure, I'll move to approve application uh, Z 2018 0143 for two lot subdivision as presented in the application dated November 21st, 2018, in the support of materials. Subject to the following conditions within 180 days of the decision and prior to issuance of a zoning permit, the applicant shall record a final survey plat in the Montpelier land records uh, per the procedures detailed in section 4405 of the zoning regulations and record with the city um, either in the deed or in a separate agreement um, an agreement memorializing the location rights and responsibilities associated with the access easement i may have made a slight typo i'm just suddenly questioning whether or not the recording of the subdivision plat that's not that's after the permit is issued 
I think. I think that was a typo on my part. But I can't remember for sure, to be honest. Right. So just, <laughs> just <laughs> I just suddenly record. am totally questioning what I wrote in there. So they just recorded the agreement. But so they hold, they still need to record a final plat. Yeah, they still need to record a final plat, but suddenly my brain is so going, wait, is that supposed to be after the permit or before the permit? 4405A says, after the Development Review Board approves the final plan, the applicant shall file a final subdivision plat for filing in the city's land record within 180 days. So after yeah. approval of the project. So, right. yeah. so it's after right. approval, but I mean it's it's So I, I would just strike, strike the, the language strike the prior, prior issuance. issuance yes. of the zoning Thank permit. You. Right. Um <coughs> Drafting too many garage decisions. So yeah, condition you got a within 100 days final plat, and then somewhere whether it's in the deed or whether it's a separate agreement, have uh, some language memorializing the easement and the rights and responsibilities of the parties over it. Yep, absolutely. All right. Uh, motion by Ryan. Second. Second by Tom. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. All right. You have your subdivision. Thank you, folks. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank Life you. Appreciate it. I expect the school will. <laughs> I, I expect <laughs> the little children will be cheering. Tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow they're going to learn the word okay. subdivision at yeah. circle time. <laughs> Some children who attended that knew before. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, that concludes any of our application business. Uh, I'll simply note that tonight is the last meeting of the DRB for 2018. Our next regularly scheduled meeting is Monday, January 7, 2019, but I believe, Meredith, as of today, do we have any applications in the pipeline? We have no applications for January 7th, so if, unless you all want to have a meeting to do some training or some other board activity, it should probably be canceled, and the next meeting would be January 22nd, a Tuesday. I think for the best way to, we can obviously discuss it, but um, my recommendation or at least sense would be let's poll the board. Um, obviously, if I, I've had time off from because of the recusal of the garage, but I know you guys have been working really, really hard uh, on a number of uh, extra meetings, so you may want a breather. Um, and in which case, because it's not just the 7th, but it may be the other meeting in January as well. Uh, the, we don't, technically we don't have an application right now for January. There is one I know of Thank that you. Thank you. if Thank you. they meet the deadline could be on for the 22nd. But so that's it. one thing that we could do, um, and we've done this before, is um, in the winter when it's slow, we've gone to one meeting a month and just simply made that the, the, the mid-month meeting um, and we could if we had an agenda you know obviously either do some training or discussion of other issues mm -hmm. um, as they arise but I think it may make sense to have that sort of by um, poll the poll the whole board mm -hmm. have Meredith send out an email to each of us and what I would encourage is not for us to discuss that uh, but to give Meredith our feedback as to what we thought, she could then compile it and and you know basically see if there is a consensus for some type of training meeting or to have the seventh off or uh, because I think we'll get a cut at this in February mm -hmm. is my sense is that we'll probably have a meeting a short meeting in January the second meeting and then February we're likely to have the same situation where we may have one or two applications just because it's the winter. But there would certainly be time at that point. And it is the holidays. People may have plans or vacations. Uh, I'm certainly open to how people want to proceed. Okay. Um, Mr. Chair, your, your idea sounds good to me. I maybe can add to that by suggesting that um, when Meredith sur surveys us, you collect ideas of the kinds of things we'd like to be trained on. Yeah. Not necessarily so that staff can scramble to train us by the 7th, but so that there's a running list of things we might be interested in. So if these do come up again, mm -hmm. there's actually time for us to make a reasonable request for some for some training. Yep. That, and that way you can kind of have in the pipeline some information for us so that even if it's six weeks from now, we have a little bit of time. It won't be unreasonable to ask you to tell us more about open meeting law <coughs> or, or whatever we're excited about. Yep. Nope. 
That's Mike and I had a very similar discussion earlier today. Excellent. Okay. <coughs> Good. That's a general consensus. Or yes. Anyone have any other new business or any other issues that we should bring over here? All right. <coughs> Hearing none, uh, I will take a motion for adjournment. So moved. Motion by Tom. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Rob. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. We are adjourned. Thank you all very much. Have a happy <laughs> new year. <laughs>